the guy just came, the um, organizer came to me saying, oh well, it's definitely not useful for the room, yeah. but I think for the recording it might be. Okay. Yeah. Just because it's free. More for the recording than for the yeah. room here. Yeah. Oh, I have a big voice. I, I'm pretty sure everybody can hear me. Loud and clear. So, is it this way? So let's get started. Um, so hi everybody, my name is uh, Ricardo and here we have Ringo, you want to introduce yourself? And the microphone. Ah, sorry. Hi, Ringo from uh, Pulumi. I work for um, a part of the sales team for uh, our European customers from out of budget. So great to have you here. My name is Ricardo, I work for Google Cloud and I'm here today to, to talk about how to set up a Cloud Build trigger to build automatically Pulumi in Python. I'm a huge Ruby lover, and since Ruby is not there yet, bug is attached to the link, which I'm going to, uh, to get you the end of the presentation. Uh, so here we are. A um, couple of words about me. I am a developer advocate for Google Cloud. I am former sysadmin and Ruby on Rails developer. I preach customers SRE, Dora, and DevOps things. Um, plus, in my free time, in my 20%, I also try to work with the Cloud Build, Cloud Deploy, and all the DevOps stack uh, in, in GCP. So today I have a five minutes to, introdu to introduce the problem and try to solve, seven to ten minutes of demo, uh, and then another five minutes of lesson learned. So it should be a very quick one, hopefully hands-on, so you should see a number of uh, uh, VS Code and UI things that hopefully are going to make this not so boring. So first things first, what are Pulumi and, and Cloud Build in case you don't know them? Uh, so Pulumi is a, a declarative infra <coughs> and code, infra is code. The way I see it is like a Terraform with a beautiful code interface on top of it, but he will eat my face if I say that. Um, it also has a SaaS version that uh, by, comes by default, which I really love because it takes care of the state. It has a beautiful UI, it has a beautiful README, which to me is a killer app. Apparently nobody else uses it but me, but I love it and it handles secrets really, really well. It looks like, you know, is, uh, if Terraform was rewritten 10 years later, that's what Pulumi it looks to me. It's just like done so well, and I love it. Cloud Build is the GCP um, Lego, uh, Lego box to, to build stuff for the CI part. We also have a part for, uh, for, C, for CD, which is called Cloud Deploy quite idiomatically. Um, in case you're curious, it has two hours of build uh, per day for free. I found out this a month ago when uh, a guy who pays for these builds, which is not me, uh, was uh, as, at the GDG in Zurich saying, oh my god, this is the killer app because, you know, you, I just use it to do any workload that I can. Two hours a day is free, so if you don't overuse it, you, you never pay for it, if you're smart. It supports GitHub, Bitbucket, also GitLab in preview, and uh, uh, Google CSR repository, cloud source repositories. Now, the architecture is pretty, pretty simple, so it's really vanilla. So the idea is you have a, either a Bitbucket or a GitHub code, that code that contains Pulumi code that tells you, oh, I want to create a bucket, I want to create a Kubernetes cluster, I want to create a God knows what. And, uh, and then you do Pulumi app, which makes sure that the infrastructure is reconciled between the theory in, in, loca in the local code into the, into the cloud. So you, you change a name, it will destroy the old thing, it will create a new thing, and we all know how it works. Now, the next step I took is I want to create a, a, a build trigger which automatically builds the stuff. And this is where it gets complicated, or at least I, I learned on my own skin that it, it, it's kind of complicated because you're building the code that autom automatizes or automates the Pulumi app uh, in the cloud. And this is where things get a bit scary. You, I will show you in the, in the demo in a second. Just a little bit of UI, you can connect uh, uh, Cloud Build, uh, sorry, you can connect uh, a GitHub repo or a Bitbucket repo. 
uh, they are implemented slightly differently. If you um, if you take a Bitbucket repo, it gets uh, replicated locally into a Google uh, um, Cloud repository, and then whenever you change, you commit uh, to Bitbucket, it will automatically pick it up after three seconds, let's say so, and then uh, you will do locally. Whereas uh, with GitHub, uh, we built an application that bridges the authentication between uh, Google and GitHub and allows you to have a fine-grained control, read-write versus only do repo one, only do repo two. In the end, you end up with the two repos and you can do whatever, you can do all the triggers. You can say, whenever you have a commit to master or to main or you have a pull request, uh, do something only if the code has changed uh, in the subdirectory path to my directory. So you can actually be very fine-grained. So the trigger will only wake up when you want to on the certain, uh, on certain parts. Now we get to the demo part, which is the interesting, well, hopefully, the more interesting part. So let me start with um, a little bit of uh, Visual Studio Code. If I do a Pulumi app, let's see what happens. Probably nothing has changed, so it will say nothing to do. The stack, uh, are you familiar with Pulumi? Uh, do you know what is a stack or what is a... Uh, are you familiar with Pulumi? No? Not me, no. No, okay. Uh, are you familiar with Terraform? Yes. Sorry? Not even. Not even? Yeah. Okay. So you have state locally, and then my code describes what I want the states to be. So let's say, uh, let me give you an example. So in the main.python, I say create a storage called app name lower. App name lower is the lowercase version of the state that I wrote here. App name, let's say Ricardo, Gita, what's your name? Sandra. Sorry? Sunder. Sunder, like this? Yes. Fantastic. So I, I, I put Sunder here. This variable will be picked up by main, and that should change the name of this bucket. And then I can do, I can change hi to hello. If I do pull me up now, probably it will detect these two changes, will destroy the two buckets with the old name, and will create the two buckets with the new name. Of course, depending on the resource that you, uh, can you see this, or is it too small? Beautiful. So there you go. Hello Gant, hi Gant. And the other one, I don't know why it's not there, but probably we'll find out later. So do you want to perform this update? Yes. Now this is a this is a change triggered by my command line. So my command line calls the Pulumi command in the in the in my local machine, which will go to the cloud and say, hey GCP, destroy the old thing and create a new one. Of course, if the if the wrapper uh, around the resource allows you to just rename it, you will rename, you rename it. In, in the case of a bucket, you cannot rename a bucket. If it was, I don't know, a load balancer or something, probably it would just uh, do that. I think we lost uh, the battery. Anyway, so this is the first part of it, right? Now, let's do it again, and uh, let's change the code again. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where is it? I have done so many command plus that I cannot see it. Okay, let me change Prova, which is Italian, to test cloud. Okay, now this is another change. I'm not <coughs> going to do a pull me up. I just, I'm just going to do a git commit main dash a dash m uh, high sender, just to, to say that this is a fresh thing, and then git push. Sorry for my uh, command line. No colors, much better now. Okay, so this should trigger, let's see if I'm fast enough to catch it up. This should trigger a new build in the cloud here. There you go. So as you can see, now cloud build is executing the, bi the, the build trigger that I created. While it's executing it, we can click and do the equivalent of a tail dash F, which is executing stuff in here. As you can see, it's uh, downloading the images, probably doing a virtual app in Python, downloading all pip installing and doing a lot of stuff. You see pip install, blah, blah, blah. While he does that, let, let's check on the trigger. This is the trigger that I created with an ugly name because Pulumi conveniently adds uh, some uh, random, uh, um, pseudo random, uh, random stuff at the end of the name to make sure that it doesn't collide with other stuff. As you can see, this is me adding silly emojis. And uh, this tells me only trigger this trigger if the code changes in example slash Python cloud bigger auto trigger. This is useful because you could have 10 triggers under 10 directories 
and only when you change code in directory 7 the trigger number 7 will trigger right it's just a convenience part so there we are let me see this is still running and now let me show you the killer app so this is the um, project that I'm using which is Python GCP cloud build auto trigger and dev 23 is a stack think of a stack as an environment like you could have dev prod QA uh, demo in Ghent uh, demo in Amsterdam and whatever right and each one of those has a hash of state that defines the the state of the variables that define it uh, one thing that is pretty cool is you can see all of this uh, in key value listing or you can see it as a, a tree Oh, sorry these are the these are the variables and these are the resources that you can see as a graph in this case the graph is pretty naive but if you do a component you could say oh let's create the Ricardo which is my name load balancer the load balancer encapsulates five things so then you will see this with a load balancer object with five children and then if you want to create three load balancers you have three the parents with five children each so the visual is pretty convenient but the best thing ever is the readme why do i love the readme because it's a markdown that you just edit locally with a lot of uh, where is it where is it where is it oh sorry this is the wrong uh, this is the wrong vs code let me try again there you are uh, this is the my pulumi readme and as you can see here and there i have uh, outputs.pulumi stack outputs.myregion you see this so when you do that that gets populated with the variables that are uh, discovered at the end of the execution I say that because in Terraform and in Pulumi some variables are not available when you are writing the code otherwise it would be so silly you just put them there right but imagine you're creating a load balancer and Google Cloud assigns the IP to the load balancer you don't know it until you have finished executing it right so you wrap that information into a, into a variable that is, is called an output that you can then utilize at the end yeah. so that is where so so maybe just to elaborate a bit on that readme part so the readme is your the, the markdown is your template yeah. but for each of these environments after creating all the resources you can mix in with the actual resource ids or names on your cloud provider or on yeah anything that you're modeling with with volumi you can mix that in and for each of these tags then you see in, in the clear readme all you can even make hyperlinks out of that so that if you hey, have a dns name populated yeah. for each of these environments you can immediately click for example on the environment created yes so this is a really handy thing that yeah it's a combination of documentation then together yeah. with what was actually set up for example, this perma URL is my Kubernetes cluster, which is parametric in the Cloud Build Gantt test, which is my project ID. This is parametric. In another environment, it would be a different project ID, and it would be another perma URL to another environment for another demo that I may be doing. And uh, this is the IP address for the application on Kubernetes, and this is the Cloud Run URL. God, it took me one hour to create this thing here. You have no idea how complicated it is. Uh, but it's not his fault. <laughs> it's our fault. We make it quite complicated to extract this. <laughs> so anyway, <coughs> this is to see how in the size of Rumi you can actually see, uh, you can actually, uh, I put all the things that I care about in a project in there because then I walk out, I do something else, I forget what I've done, and when I get back to it, I'm like, ah, this is my output. So whenever I add something succulent to my project, I just uh, spend 30 seconds more to add the URL to that thing that I just created. So I don't forget that I created it love it um, this is kind of the end of the demo let me see in my demo script if I forgot something uh, you can do this on the Pulumi SaaS solution but also on, on, uh, like if you run it on prep or not I have the same question. Can you do it if I do it uh, in local host? If I, can I replicate no, this? Is, this is the, the um, this is the render. Um, you can um, have the so a read read me any stack can have any output. Yeah. Now we treat an an output named read me <coughs> special on our platform yeah. to render this. Yeah? The, the the rendering you see here, this web UI is not open source. Yeah? So you can, in a very high tier, uh, ask to uh, get that deployed on-prem, yeah. uh, but that's with a very high uh, license fee. Yeah? Uh, if you have your cloud sta uh, the state of every stack stored on cloud storage, 
and you have any other rendering that can display markdown and render that as HTML, then that would work as well. Okay? Because we populate in the end the value with the act, so we mix in the values before exposing the, the, rent, uh, the, the markdown content, let's say. Thank you. I had exactly the same question for Rinko, so thanks for anticipating that. Because I love it so much, and maybe I don't want to pay for it, so now I know I need to pay for it. Okay, let's go back to the presentation, if you don't mind. So that was the end of the demo. And as you see, it was a very simple demo. These are my lessons learned. Because again, as you can imagine, I'm playing around. First I create a bucket, which is the, is the hello world of Pulumi. I create a bucket in uh, Amazon or Google or Azure. Next step, I create a Kubernetes cluster, more complicated. Next step, I created a build trigger. The problem here is that the build trigger is both the output of my Pulumi app, and it's also something that builds itself. So when I commit the code in the cloud, this trigger will trigger a Pulumi app which changes things, included himself. So that's, we, we might be creating Skynet here, like it's, a, it, it's weird, right? I'm, I'm being probably arrogant, I'm just building, or maybe I'm just building something in a broken way. Let's see if it was broken or if it's, it was not. So number one, we are really building an airplane while we're flying it, right? The, the build part there is risky, is dangerous because we are building a plane. So when I do a Pulumi app, all good. From local host, I am issuing the creation of a trigger, no big deal. But when I do a git push, git commit a git push, then the trigger executes itself. And that is, introduces a, a, a circularity. What if uh, it changes the name of the trigger while executing the trigger? God knows. Yeah. What can happen wrong? Well, well uh, and maybe <laughs> to add to that, the, the reason why that he got into a circle is because he mixed the infrastructure code to set up the build pipeline together with all the code to set up the real infrastructure. So in the end, this should have been two Pulumi programs, just separately Which from each other. Which is learned in a few slides, yeah. exactly. Uh, so this is what happened, like why did it happen? Hmm, let me see. Uh, so uh, two weeks ago I meet this guy and he says, Ricardo, I, I, I understand your code a little bit, why don't you refactor the cloud build part into a component which can actually clean up that problem that I introduced. I said, mm, let me try. And then I was a bit, let's say, I was low on time because I had other things to do and I realized on Friday morning, three days ago, that I couldn't have possibly, it was still broken. So I reverted all the code, I moved it to another directory and I say, okay, I admit failure. I go back to the V1 version, which is the one that I'm showing to you. And, uh, but I tried and I tried. And when I tried this, the first thing is it's working. So what do I do? Now I have a component. I want to instantiate three versions of that component. The same, uh, um, the same, um, uh, the same GitHub repo on two different directories, the V1 and the V2, and a different uh, uh, Bitbucket repo. So three instances of it, and it exploded spectacularly. Why? Because I hadn't thought of the fact that the, the state of Pulumi would be a single state. So the first thing, ah, okay, create one state per execution. Still clutched spectacularly. Uh, because the first, uh, in, if I would have two states, let's say Dave and staging, they would have a clutch in the name. So adapt the name of the uh, of the stacks, so the stacks are separated uh, from this execution. So dev creates three dev things, and staging creates three staging things. So it was a lot of back and forth, and I failed uh, terribly. So again, this morning he says, Ricardo, you forgot to separate the build code from the infrastructure code, which is my lesson learned number number two still. So cloud storage, GKE class, all the cloud run, all the things that I showed you before mm. should be in one directory, in one, in, in one state, and the build part should be in a different state, right? And then, yes, you can create three of this they that will not interfere with the other one. Okay, self-slap. Um, third thing, Friday morning, uh, my colleagues say, uh, Ricardo, you're coming for lunch? I'm like, of course I'm coming. Oh, wait a second, I think I just committed the, um, in clear text on, on a public GitHub repo, uh, a Pulumi key. Let me come in uh, five minutes. And uh, I actually noticed by myself, and when I was about to go for lunch, I realized that in my email I had this, your access token is exposed, which is great because the fact that I noticed by myself was quite coincidental. Um, I was just doing a git status and expecting this file to be locally not checked, but it wasn't there. Like, why is it not there? 
I did a guitar by mistake. So yes, that's uh, that's what happens. So thank Pulumi for having an integration yeah. with GitHub. Some background on this: the reason Pulumi, uh, the the reason Ricardo got this mail is because we have actually security advisory integration with GitHub and with uh, Bitbucket. Um, yeah, GitLab, yes, with the SaaS version, but yeah, for every on-prem version, of course, uh, not. Yeah. Um, but because of that, it triggered via GitHub that there was a Pulumi key in there. Yeah, and again, another fun fact, changing the Pulumi key, it took me like revoke the old key, create a new key, put it in the local code, this time encrypted, blah, blah, blah. it took me 10 minutes. The problem is that the, the build trigger in the cloud kept having the old one. I don't know if it was building himself with the old thing, but it was circulating the old thing. So I had to go on the UI and manually paste it in the UI environment variable. So that's to say this circularity, uh, introduce additional problems that I wouldn't have thought of. Uh, so lesson learned number four, if you want to build a component, don't start with a meta builder, but start with something else. So when I go home, I will try to do um, a component for um, for MySQL and Postgres <coughs> because I've, I've already half baked in, so it's half done. I just need to refactor in some beautiful uh, component that he sent me the code. So I, I, I'm super excited about this. So that was it, very simple presentation and I hope I didn't steal too much of your time. Um, these are some links if you want to. There is a Medium article on that. The code is publicly available on GitHub. If, if this link is too long, think of Palladius is my username and Pulumi is the name of the product. And that's pretty much it. Questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. J just wondering the the um, I, so I'm more familiar with the Terraform, but how did the the state file concept in Terraform work in uh, in um, Pulumi? One one thing that I I was a bit surprised is that you were able to run uh, from your own laptop and also from the CI um, system, so they well, it's shared state files somewhere. Of, uh, well, it, the, the state is actually, uh, conceptually, the state handling is almost exactly the same. Yeah? On one hand, you do a Pulumi login and then you give it a location. The simplest thing is, while you're testing out Pulumi, is you do Pulumi login local and your state will be on your own laptop. Of course, that doesn't work and scale in a team context. So, if you don't want our SaaS, yeah, you can still use the same way as Terraform does and do any cloud storage backend. Yeah? So we use then the cloud storage specific locking mechanism to make sure that with concurrent updates that nothing can happen wrongly. Um, but then comes the counterpart of Terraform Cloud, which is for Pulumi our SaaS. Yeah? Okay. Personal account, always free to use, nothing charged ever. Yeah? Once you go to the team edition or beyond that, then you Stop pay it. for the service. And on top of just the state handling yeah, and the rendering of uh, the, the graphics you see, um, one of the additional more enterprisey features is the enforcement, for example, of policy as code, which is beside the infrastructure code. Also, you can write code which enforces policies on all of the resources that Pulumi wants to deploy. So you can have an overlay sort of of checkers um, that say, okay, yeah, we are we need when we need to remain compliant uh, compliant as a as a as a, an organization. We can only uh, deploy our stuff within EU boundaries, for example. And that that is a sort of a rule that any region for whatever cloud for. Um, that you have to remain within that, and, and maybe you list then <coughs> the allowed zones. And if somebody by accident would say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm trying it something in the US, well, Pulumi will block it. No deployment will happen because, yeah, it will clearly say only allowed to deploy in EU, for example. So that's the, um, the thing that in our enterprise tier, which you can deploy policy packs, you can enforce these on all of your stacks, mandatory or just informational wise. So maybe informational wise on your dev stack, but mandatory all these policies and rules on your production stacks. That's 
where the stretches <coughs> where we as Pulumi the company earn our money with. If I can give a shorter info because I know less than you, it's I think the form chart is exactly like Terraform, it's just the default is reversed. So in Terraform, you start with Terraform, the state is a local file, right? The TF state. And then you need to spend some time at least to me, to move that to a Google Cloud bucket, it takes me a while. You need to create it manually. You cannot create it with Terraform, otherwise you have a circularity. So if you want to do it, you need to do it into different stacks. So it's complicated. In Pulumi, it, that is the default version. It's under their SAS, right? So you can have the state local, you just need to configure it out of the default. But it's exactly like Terraform, just with two different defaults. Okay, so this comes with the SAS by default, that's fine. Right. Any other questions? Or? Thanks. All right. If you would have more questions on Pulumi, we have a community Slack, so feel free yeah. to join and ask anything you like. Yeah. I'm just starting as a